Well, June marks the start of meteorological summer, but also the start of the Atlantic hurricane season, which runs through November. It's been pretty active in recent years. What might this year have in store? I'll break it down. So the official uh, hurricane forecast for the Atlantic this season calls for near normal or below normal conditions. So good news maybe for the Atlantic and especially the US. So 40% probability that we see a near normal season in the Atlantic, 30% chance though a below normal. So you combine it, it's a 70% chance of a below or normal season. And part of the reason might be because of something you're all gonna hear more and more about for a lot of reasons, El Nino. In an El Nino year, we tend to have fewer Atlantic hurricanes, but more Eastern Pacific hurricanes. And it has to do with how El Nino influences the jet stream and larger weather patterns. In a La Nina season or scenario, like we've had the last three years, we tend to get more Atlantic hurricanes. And that has been the case for the most part the last three years in this rare tip, triple dip La Nina pattern that we had. So in an El Nino year, we get a energized southerly jet stream. La Nina year, it becomes a little bit further north, especially in the Atlantic where it matters. And the jet stream is proportional to where you have shear in the atmosphere. The more wind you have, inevitably the more shear you're gonna have, which is a change in direction or wind speed with height. So we also have to look at surface winds and kind of start with how do hurricanes form. So at the equator, we have trade winds. They come in light from the Northeast in the Northern hemisphere, opposite direction in the Southern hemisphere. And we gotta look at the intertropical convergence zone, which is sort of similar to the equator in terms of it's where the peak heating of the planet is. Where does the sun heat things the most? And you get a belt of kind of continuous clouds and thunderstorms like we're seeing right now, but it of course moves with the seasons. Northern hemisphere summer, which we're heading into, it moves north. And when you get these buckles in that belt of heating, that intertropical convergence zone, that causes the trade winds to shift direction. All of that wind direction is based on Earth's rotation. So you get more convergence in these troughs or waves. That causes the air to collide, move upward, and form clusters of thunderstorms. And the more that happens, the more air rushes in to replace that air that is rising and large scale circulation starts to turn counterclockwise again because of the Earth's rotation. So you start to get now a tropical depression. This is when we really start to pay attention. Are the ingredients in that area uh, able to allow this situation to just continue to progress and develop potentially into a tropical storm? and eventually a hurricane. And the more this gets going, the tighter that circulation gets, the faster those wind speeds get, it eventually becomes, again, a tropical storm or a hurricane. It becomes kind of a perfect system where you have that inflow, warm, humid air over those warm waters of the Atlantic or wherever it is, uh, rotating counterclockwise, feeding the thunderstorms, but then it rotates around the eye wall and then that air goes upward and outward because it hits the top of our atmosphere, which becomes stable. So you have air kind of coming in at the surface, counterclockwise, air going upwards around the eye wall, and then it turns clockwise because the air is moving outward at the top. And this is why we can kind of see uh, what seems to be like two different directions in the movement of clouds in a hurricane. But shear switches this whole system, tilts it, and it kind of falls apart. So it's good for a supercell, individual, small-scale thunderstorms, but a large-scale phenomenon like a hurricane, it's a bad thing. So as I mentioned, you can kind of see these upper-level high clouds look like they're spiraling out clockwise, but on the inner part of this storm, at the surface, it's all moving in counterclockwise. So a hurricane, just like a severe thunderstorm, lasts for a long time because it's able to organize and separate out warm inflow from the cool outflow. So in a La Nina year or a normal year, a hurricane's able to organize. But when we have those stronger upper level winds in an El Nino year, that allows the storm to kind of rip apart. You get more shear, it's not able to organize itself. So you want less wind, less shear to create a strong hurricane and more hurricanes. And it's partly to do with the concentration of energy. Latent heat, which comes from warm ocean water, is concentrated uh, in a smaller area. More energy, more wind, stronger storms, but it's spread out when you have shear spreading it all out. So what does this look like? You can really see the difference. So this is looking at hurricanes categories one through three. El Nino year compared to a La Nina year. Look at the difference. You can see there's less lines. That means less storms. You still have storms, of course, but fewer of them. And when we look at major hurricanes, it's even a little more obvious. So category three through five hurricanes 
El Nino seasons compared to La Nina seasons. So you see about a third fewer hurricanes in an El Nino year in the Atlantic compared to a La Nina year. So maybe some good news there, but one thing that could throw a wrench in all this, climate change, look at how warm our oceans are. In the Atlantic, where those storms will originate this year, we have above normal water temperatures yet again. And even when we look at most of the Gulf of Mexico, above normal water temperatures, so anything that gets going is able to avoid the shear, will develop into some strong storms. So that's something we're gonna to have to watch through the season. How does the warm water balance with a higher sheared atmosphere? And just when does that El Nino pattern really get going in earnest? Lots of things to watch this season.